uh, I, I, we move uh, directly to the next panel. So Tom Rosenstiel will uh, be the man in charge here. Please. Ufro that was red anymore, and I didn't bring the drum <laughs> set. Uh, instead, we're, we're going to talk about trust. Uh, and I'm going to try and be the uh, skeptic here. I should say that I'd love to do a cage match with Henry Blodgett and not give him a suntan, but something else. <laughs> I take issue with a number of things he says, but uh, um, anyway. I'm going to take issue with a number of things that my panelists are going to say, too. Uh, let's talk about trust. I have to stand over here so I can see my slides. OK, good. Oh, great. OK, so first, some stats about trust. There are some things about it that may be a little different than uh, it's now it's gone. Uh, then you may know. First, the trust in the media has dropped by half uh, since uh, 1977. Um, in, uh, in, in, 70, in 77, 72% had a fair amount of trust, uh, and by 2016, um, it had dropped uh, to 32%. But people don't often understand, knowing the history of this, is that half of that decline in trust in media in the United States happened before the internet, okay? Really happened between 77 and 97. What was going on? Well, the first thing that happened was cable. And we think about the internet as a pretty big thing. Imagine your television dial goes from 4 to 400. That created choice. That was followed by the Reagan administration deregulating uh, uh, our media. So that things that you could do on television and radio uh, you, uh, by the mid-'80s would have been illegal in 1980 to do. That created uh, an environment where partisan talk radio Filter bubble media like we have on, in, in, in cable and talk radio um, w were now possible, would not have been possible. And with all that choice and all of that uh, new media, talk radio and a lot of cable avidly marketed themselves as the alternative to the mainstream liberal media. And as we look deep into this, um, what we see is there's a significant partisan split. 14% of, so we've got 32% trust in media in 16. 14% of Republicans have a fair level of trust, only 14%, versus 51% of Democrats. Independents are in the middle. So this is a significant thing. Part of this decline is about politics. But here's an ominous sign. What group trusts the media least after Republicans, or what is the most distrustful of the media a, uh, aside from Republicans? It's the young, people under 50. Why? Because these are folks who grew up in this time period with a lot of media choice and with all of this partisan media. They did not grow up with Walter Cronkite. They did not grow up with a, a, a you know, the, the, the media that we think of as sort of down the middle, trying to be disinterested. That's a minority of our mediascape now. So what's next? As we think about these issues going forward and we think about the crisis in local media and all these other things, the screen keeps giving out. The next big thing is audio. And on audio, you're not going to get search choices. You're not going to say to, hey, Google, give me 10, 12 pages of options for such and such. You say to Google, hey, Google, what's the answer to this? And you get one answer. One answer, who's providing that? Uh, who will become the single authority over our political rhetoric and our political knowledge going forward? And all that's before 2016. Enter Trump. Let's look at his rhetoric just briefly. News that's critical of him is fake news, meaning the news media are unreliable. Media are the enemy of the people, meaning the media are elitist. They're against you and me. The media are failing, failing media, the failing New York Times, meaning they're on the wrong side of history, unlike me, unlike us. 
The goal of this rhetoric, which is influencing this press, is not to make people believe the fake news. It's to make them doubt all the news, to doubt what's real. And then you say, well, who can I trust? I trust the leader I like. To disbelieve fact and to put faith in the belief of their leader. This creates existential channel challenge for journalists. Why? Well, first off, our whole notion of reality is built fact upon fact upon verified fact, and if we have enough of them, we think we have the truth. That's kind of built into the religion we practice, the way our bra brains are wired. He challenges that. And the second existential challenge is how do you cover someone who says you're the enemy of the people? So we're going to talk about these existential challenges. <laughs>